Welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. Today we're going to go over how I designed a big uh, inline swim bait. I'm calling this inline. Don't know why. It's an internally weighted swim bait. Always wanted to make a really big swim bait. Uh, don't know why. It's just been in my head. So let's jump into Fusion 360 here. I'll run down kind of how I made it real quick. Then we'll go through a little bit of the build like we normally do on this channel. And uh, we'll get after it. Because what do we like doing more than 3D printing fishing lures? Uh, we like talking about them and hardly ever fishing them because that's, that's kind of what I do. All right, so we're in Fusion 360 here. This is the final result. This is what I came up with. Uh, you can see real fusiform design. I didn't add any sorts of, you know, fins or anything like that. Uh, all I did was a large paddle tail at, I don't know, you know, about 70 degrees or so offset from the main body. So not exactly 90, not exactly 45 either, but uh, I think enough to give it some pretty decent action. I'll go over a little bit how I, how I did this. Depending on when this video comes out, I have explained this before in previous videos, but I've used it to create a lot of other kind of fusiform designs. When I say fusiform, I mean more of like an ellipse shaped body. So not exactly circular all the way through and then changing as it goes down. I like to implement that same way doing crankbaits or poppers. I like to do that on soft baits too. So this is what I did. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to get a sketch, uh, kind of an outline perimeter, if you will, same thing of kind of the body that you want and the size that you want. So that's essentially what I did here. Not all these sketches down here, but right here, I just made a cut out of the body, made it into one like blocky body. If you can see that there, made a sketch from there and then made a sketch from the top. Then I just did a press pull to cut that out. So all I have left then is just this, uh, this blocky body right here. Then what I'm going to come through and do is I'm going to come through each one of these offset planes. So I'm just going to take it an offset plane and then go like probably, I don't know, 20 millimeters down the length of this bait. Cause this is a larger bait. It's like 180, I think it's about an eight inch swim bait. I'm going to go down the length of that with offset planes. I'm going to create a sketch on that. And then I'm going to do a uh, section analysis on it. So when I create this sketch here in a section analysis, when that body's turned on, it's going to be cut off. So I'll show you that real quick. So you can see when I do that section analysis and we turn that offset plane off, I'm going to be able to come in here and create an ellipse around this section of the body. So you can see that right here. This is our block body. Remember that, that we started out with. And what we wanted to do is come into that size. So all we're going to do is make an ellipse like you can see I've done here on each one of these sections. And then we're going to have a wireframe model essentially of our body. And that's right here. So we can turn this sketch off and this one. So we have this kind of wireframe. Then all we have to do realistically, not that tough, is come in here and we're just going to do a loft between these. And I'm going to turn that section analysis off. So we can actually see what we're doing, but then I'm just going to loft between these and fusion's going to just make up a decision for us on what that body's going to look like. And now if we like that or not, is a totally different scenario, right? So you have to come in and adjust each of these sketches in turn, but that's all I do there. And then I'm like, well, I like that body. Obviously we already set it up that way. So then I kept it and then you end up having Let's turn the analysis off again. You end up having that body lofted right there. So I like that quite a bit. I thought that would work out pretty well. Also, what I did is I modeled in uh, the hook I was going to use. I'm using like a really big, like nine knot saltwater hook for this. The other reason I decided to do an inline swim bait for this is I had a big bag of these hooks left over from doing uh, lake trout bullet head jigs. And I think they were like three to four ounce jigs. I used them for ling cod fishing and rock fishing on the coast when I lived out there. So I had a bunch of these left over. So I needed a bait that would accommodate the use of those hooks. Ended up 
you know, deciding on the big swim bait, and it worked out really well so far. What I really like about these larger swim baits, inline swim baits, is that you can weight them because you want to have them run in a specific way. Uh, there's not really a way to weight those because the jig, the hook is going to be integrated in here, so you can't really have a jig, right? You can't really have this part be heavy. There's plastic there in the middle, right? So that's going to be the second part of this build. I'll tell you that in a little bit here, but I think I should tell you a little bit about how I did this tail. So essentially all I did was create a, a plane here on the angle I wanted. So I just made a sketch. I created the sketch at this angle. I made a small body here to where I could create the sketch here. Then all I'm doing is just making a sketch, extruding it out, seeing if I like the paddle size, and then connecting it here with a loft to the original body. So. I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, looks a little goofy here. I wanted to keep that tail section a little bit goofy, though. I like kind of this bend in it. Don't know why, just aesthetically for me. I don't really know if it changes the action much at all. Probably not at all, really, but uh, just, I don't know, for some reason it trips my trigger, so kept her in there. As far as doing these, uh, these are just essentially split face operations, so create a sketch. Go up to Modify, Split Face, choose this face, have the sketch do it for you. These eyeballs, these are simple, just pretty simple. Not hard to do, actually. Uh, pretty, pretty easily. Same deal, Split Face, extrude them out. Uh, very simple design here. I wanted it streamlined. I wanted it to be one of those that you could cast out, crank back in. Uh, the biggest part of this build then is going to actually be the internal weight system. So like I said, I, I put in the hooks and I modeled those in as a separate body just so I could kind of see where I'm working with, get my idea of the size of the bait that I wanted to do, uh, the size the lure is going to be. So then I use that same hook and that same body as a different component in different designs to try and make an internal weight system. So this is kind of the first iteration that I did here. You can see that if we turn the body on, all right, so you can see that body in the background of this. This is the first iteration of the weight design. So what I was thinking here is I could pour this out of lead for the jig head portion of that. It's gonna be internally locked into the plastisol when we inject it, and then just kind of a rigidity uh, like a strengthened part out of PLA plastic in the back here that'll be poured around as well and then it'll stiffen up the back a little bit. So I didn't make this into a mold, I made this into a mold box, did pour it out in lead, worked out pretty well, stuck to the hook pretty well, uh, didn't move around the hook shaft or anything like I thought it would just because it was poured on there separately. Also this backing plates, they printed out pretty well and they could be glued together pretty well. That all worked. It stiffened up the back section of the bait as well here so it didn't move around the hook as much. Uh, overall worked out pretty well. Just didn't give the real nice streamlined action I was looking for. Kind of would like this to be like uh, maybe even a pike or musky vertical jigging tool as well so it could be a bait that you could vertical jig fish. What happens is it was sitting to a 45 degree angle there because the weight itself of this whole lure is so far backward that when it was swimming through the water it still had uh it would still swim like this pitched a little bit so this was the first iteration it was good to do did it out of mold max 60 worked out pretty well uh it was good to get my feet wet on that and to see if i could actually do an internally weighted design if we could inject it as well around this it seemed to work out pretty well so then I decided to move on to an additional design to try and get that weight a little bit more forward. So then we transitioned finally into this one, which is a little bit different. So basically with this design then, I made it about the same size, a volume of lead at least, but way more weighted forward. And it'll still be able to use that like structural piece, that PLA, PLA piece to kind of strengthen up the back of the bait. Um, but we're going to have a lot more weight forward. So uh, this one, you can see it kind of touches out the side of this bait a little bit. That's just because it's not quite lined up correctly with the body itself, but it is slightly smaller than the body itself. So when you do cast it into the lead, it actually uh, stays to the inside of the bait. 
This one worked the same way. Mold max into this, uh, mold max 60 into this cavity, pouring lead to that, sticks to the hook. It's a little bit nicer here because it comes up the bend as well, so it's really secured into there. Also did inject some of these around this, and it worked out pretty well. So that kind of gets me back into the actual design of the lure itself and the mold box for that. So here's the setup I did for pouring, or I guess not pouring, injecting the bait itself. This is a very large cavity uh, for cooling cavity for the injection because this is such a large bait. Like I said, this is about eight, I think. Yeah, about eight inches long. So that's a lot of soft plastic that needs to cool down and uh, grab from a cavity into this. Also, because we have an internal hook design here, I wanted that the area around the hooks to be as large as possible just so that the hook doesn't cause any interference with this and then also acts as a vent in its own right. So I made those very large. So when this plastic comes down in through the cavity, it's also going to be able to push air out and around the hook. It's always easier to clean out that soft plastic around the hook than to, you know, potentially deal with a huge dent here or some serious flashing issues. So I just figured let's just make sure the hook can sit in there really well the first time, not have to deal with it uh, every single injection. So that worked out really well. Also, because it's such a large bait and a large cavity to fill, I gave it a little bit of uh, like an air escape chamber here. I like doing that uh, nowadays just to help reduce denting. I still get a little bit of denting with this, but it's not too bad. Uh, the same way I went through anything else, I created a mold box for this. The problem with this bait is that it's so large that I couldn't print it on my Anet A8. So what I ended up doing was creating a mold box, then just splitting that body up and printing it up into four different pieces for the mold, gluing those pieces together with uh, just super glue, CA glue, and some activator just to make sure they held together quickly. And uh, then after I got that mold together in separate pieces, I poured in the Mold Max 60 and then released worked out really well had no major issues with that overall this was a, an awesome bait i really wanted to do a big inline swim bait i never did an internal weight system which i thought was kind of cool uh really looks good in the water had it in the bathtub for a little bit uh it is of course seven degrees outside right now we have all frozen lakes so i can't really take it out and test it and show you guys how it does perform but where you got that for the spring so i'm excited for that hopefully you found the video educational some way don't know how you would have but you could have i'm sure somebody did somewhere at least i hope so if you want to see more of what i'm up to or whatever and i'm not posting enough on youtube because i tend to do that if that's the case please check out all my social media i post all the time there, doing a lot of airbrushing don't know what i'm doing there but learning because it's the only way to get better right practice makes okay for the most part it doesn't make perfect because i'm pretty bad if you got any ideas on what to name this thing let me know in the comments below because i have no idea probably just another swim bait because it looks like every other one just saying but it's mine so i'm happy about it <laughs> so have a great day week month year whatever evening morning whenever you're watching this and until the next one keep your amps up and your filament dry 10 toes down to the ground right now. Right now? Right now. Think I finally figured out who I am, what my style, but I'll keep my soul to the ground. Thinking up, up, up. Keep that ego in clown. Rather clown all out by myself right now. Big, big man, like my ship is all sound. Like no water on board, like I'm not about to drown. I'm gonna keep it all 100, man. I'm really freaking out. People listen in now. I'm not just talking to myself. Make me scared. I'm gonna let them all down right now. Right now. Right now, pray I never lose myself. Pray I'm flashing city lights. I keep my pretty boy smile. Pray this all work out. <laughs>